All right, so let's look at completing the square. Completing the square is this cool technique where we change this quadratic equation. You know, this is the general form of a quadratic equation. AX squared plus BX plus C. And we want to change it from the general form into this nifty little form here, affectionately called the completing the square form. A into X plus H to be squared plus K. Now, H, H in this form is a combination of B and A. And K is a combination of A, B, and C. So we change it from this look into this look. For example, if we had this equation, this is a quadratic equation, we want to change it. This is the answer. We want to change it to look like this. Now, wouldn't it be great if we had a formula for H and K based on A, B, and C? So like for negative 5 and 6, if I could use these numbers to just get the answer one time, or, or to get the answer for K one time in the example, Stay tuned, let me talk about this. Now, one of the problems with completing the squares, your teacher will show you one method, your lesson teacher will come and show you our next method, your cousin will come and show you our next method, I will come and show you our next method, you watch our next video on YouTube, you see our next method, then you go in your textbook, you see our next method, oh my gosh. What I'm going to talk about in this video is one, the formula method. Reason why you could use it, why you can't use it, right? And we talk about the natural method, which is like the completing the square, the proper way method. This is my favorite method. And then we'll mention the other methods. The other methods are comparing coefficients and, hy and a hybrid method using maybe the formula method and the natural, natural method together. Okay, we just mentioned the other methods. Right, so I would recommend that you learn this, but you try to do this. You try to actually complete the square. You learn the formula method just in case because this is so easy. If you run into problems, at least you could complete the square. And you want to always be able to complete the square because after you complete the square, you have to go on to get a whole heap of marks in the question. So you must be able to at least complete the square. And after you have quickly learned the formula method, try to learn the natural completing the square method actually going about it all the steps all right let's go before i continue what is next on this channel next videos what is asked after you complete the square after you complete the square there's a heap of things you can ask you i will break it down into into groups so you can see the three main things that they ask you after you complete the square um past paper questions tips and pointers so maybe we'll do some maybe this may be two videos maybe it may be one depending on how long it takes to edit and right i don't remind people to subscribe enough so subscribe i post daily maths and soon to be other topics motivation and just vibes all right so let's start off with the formula method this was a past paper question let's see if we can solve this now, this is important. Everything that I do, follow the exact statement, the exact settings, right? Please listen to that. Alright, so, the first thing you want to do is write AX squared minus, uh, plus BX plus C. AX squared plus BX plus C is the general form of a quadratic equation. B is negative 5, C is 1, A is 3. So, we're lining up because we're going to use a formula. The two formulas you want to write next are these two guys. H is that, B on 2A, and K is this, C take away B squared on 4A. So these are the two formulas you want to memorize. I would advise you right now, stop the video, write down the formula, try to memorize it, turn over the page, check yourself that you know it, write it down, and at the end of the video, check and see if you know the formula again. So these two guys we are using. So let's write them. Next step, write the formula and write it in the same way that I'm going to write it here. So you write H and 4A. So now that you have written the formula, all that's left to do is to plug it in and get the value. So what is B? B is negative 5. 2 by A is 3. So you may be tempted to plug this into your calculator and get an answer in decimals. Don't do that. Keep everything in fractions for this. So, equal negative 5 over 6. We good with that. Fractions. Beautiful. K is equal to 1. Take away. B is negative 5 to be squared. 
A common mistake is when we square this, we leave the negative. But when you square a negative number, it should turn into positive. 4 and A is 3 again. 1 take away 25 over 12. This leaves us with, leaves us with negative 1 and not a half, 1 over 12. So for this part, you can use your calculator, but remember to keep it in fractions or use the fraction setting on your calculator. Alright, and be careful with grouping up everything into one and solving it on your calculator. Remember to use brackets if you're about to do that, or try it part by part. I'm telling you the common mistakes that happen. Alright, so we've practically finished here. All that's left is to actually use the values, because this here is our value for K, and this here is our value for H. So we just need to use these values in the completed the square form. So we'd write therefore a into x minus h to be squared plus k is equal to and and we begin to substitute values. A is 3, x take away h is negative 5 and 6, negative 5 and 6 plus k, k is negative 1 and 1 twelfth, negative 1 and 1 twelfth. So it's especially important to use brackets when we are putting in values, especially if they are negative. Okay, so we just simplify 3 by x, negative and a negative, two negative signs next to each other. Um, and I should have simplified the sign one time. Okay, I have to do an extra line because I was hurry. Um, 3. There should be a squared here and a squared there. X. Don't forget about your squared there. That's a common mistake. X plus 5 and 6. I'm changing this to 1 sub 1. I'm changing this to 1 subtraction sign because positive and negative. What am I doing, my people? And this is the answer to the question. Not quite the answer actually. I made a mistake. I come home and I'm now checking the video and thanks to the people who sent me the mistake. This was supposed to be positive. This is positive. This would be negative. This would be negative. And if you watch at the end of the video, you'll see this will be the answer we got in the last method that we do. So let me just fix that. So I'll give you some questions to try the end of the video, so hang on, right? But first I want to do the actual completing the square method, which is method 2. You see, the one problem with this first method is that you can actually lose or drop a mark, one mark, because depending on how the question is phrased, you didn't actually complete the square. You use a formula and you just simply plug in values for h and k. So if they said by completing the square or by finding the perfect square, uh, there is a the possibility that you lose a mark but it's still important to know this method because it's so easy and sometimes you might just need to do this and it's better you lose one mark than you lose the whole seven marks for the question because you couldn't complete the square in the first place so let's use the same equation 3x squared minus 5x plus 1 this is not the formula method this is our natural completing the square method so 3x squared minus 5x plus 1, the first thing you want to do is take out a. Factorize a. Now, some teachers will say factorize a from all three terms, and some will say factorize it from the two terms. I prefer to factorize it from the first two terms. So 3x squared, take away, if I take 3 out of this, this 5 should come over 3 plus 1. Or you can put the whole thing over 3. But since we just dealing with the coefficients, 5 over 3, right? So hopefully you caught what happened there. If I multiply 3 by x squared, I'll get that back. 3 by this, I'll get that back. Alright? So we're going good so far. What's next is a kind of Jedi mind trick. Alright, so the first thing we did, the first thing we did was whip out e. So that's the first thing that we did. We ripped out the A. There's a next step here. But before you go to the next step, I want to jump that step and go to this step. Because I just want to help you understand the process. So remember we skipped in that intermediate step. You'll put 3 
and now you'll put x not x squared take away half of this number which is 5 over 3 half of the 5 over 3 you now remember this is not the 5 here this is 5 over 8 so you want half of that number 5 over 6 how did I get 6 half of 5 over 3 is 5 over 3 watch the, the scrap here 5 over 3 half of that is actually 5 over 6 so this is a technique you can learn for completing the square half of because you'll always have to find half of this number close the brackets and square it so once again 3 by x not x squared the squares the square comes here x minus 5 over 6 to be squared what we just did there is create a perfect square this is a perfect square x minus 5 over 6 to be squared based on half the value of this and that's how we complete the square that's the that's the key step in completing the square creating this perfect square but when you create this perfect square this is the key part pay attention when you create this perfect square you created an extra number if you square back out this you would see that you get this and this but you also get an extra number and the extra number is this to be squared 5 over 6 squared that is the important part 5 over 6 squared so that number 5 over 6 to be squared negative 5 over 6 to be squared must be accounted for now let's see what happens in this step before I'm not finished here but let's see what's happening here 3 into x squared minus 5 over 3 x I'm going to put in the number that we know is missing it's going to be 5 over 6 to be squared now 5 over 6 to be squared negative doesn't matter because you're squaring it it's going to be 25 over 36 right so that's our next scrap book in there um so i'm adding in 25 over 36 and that's the key put back the one coming down here so now that we add in 25 over 36 there's one more game this complete and this square wants to play on us we must multiply this 3 by the 25 over 36 and subtract it from the equation because that's the only way this is going to be equal to this imagine if you just add in a number to the equation you must compensate by taking out that number but this number is being multiplied by 3 so this is actually take away 3 times this number one last scrap working where can I fit this let's fit it here 25 over 36 multiplied by 3 is 25 over 12 so we have 25 over 12 squeezing out of the equation here. so this is subtract 25 over 12 so one take away 25 over 12 now you may need to watch that segment several times if you are kind of new to this because there's a lot of information in there the best way to understand it is just do a few questions do a few questions maybe a little more than a few questions and you'll begin to see the pattern easy alright so the last thing to do is one take away 25 over 12 it's negative 1 over 112 so once again we kept everything in fractions or mixed numbers if possible and this is the same answer that we got when we did method 1 so here's something cool to note about this method it's usually just three lines but those three lines give people a lot of help hey how about you try these two questions which are also past papers using what you just tried to solve them using the two methods remember make sure you understand the formula methods first before trying the tougher methods after you subscribe to the channel there's a notification button you can click that it's a bell you can click that and be notified when the next video is coming up